In this recording, we will look at how to do vector subtraction geometrically and apply this to solving an example. And if we have two vectors A and B, then A minus B is the same as A plus negative B. And what this means geometrically, negative B is in the exact opposite direction to vector B. So it will appear parallel to B, but with the arrow head in the opposite end of the vector, so that it is pointing the opposite way. And when we're adding A and negative B, well, we must always add vectors head to tail. So, for instance, this could be done as shown on the left, A plus negative B, where this would then correspond to the vector here. Or alternatively, it could be the same as negative B plus A, which you'll notice will again give the same vector. And by head to tail, in this first example, for instance, you'll see that that means that the arrowhead of A then joins on to the tail of negative B. And this can be applied to looking at the relationship between water current, a boat's velocity relative to water, and the boat's velocity relative to land, by using the following relationship. Namely, that the boat's velocity relative to land, which we'll call vector C, that is equal to the velocity of the water, that is the current, plus the boat's velocity relative to water, which relates to the actual speed and direction the person is rowing in. And we can rearrange this equation using vector subtraction in cases where we want to know velocity relative to water, given that we know about the current or water velocity, and also where the person wants the boat to go relative to land. For example, a woman wants to get to a destination that is due north of her starting point. And to do this, she needs to row across the stream. The current is flowing east at 12 kilometres per hour. So right away, we can put that on our diagram. It is flowing east, and it has a magnitude of 12. And because that is the current, that is vector A in our above formula. And we know the woman wants to go to a destination that is due north. That is, she wants to actually end up with the boat relative to land going north. So that is vector C. And the woman can row the boat at a constant speed of 16 kilometres per hour. So that 16 kilometres per hour is actually the speed of the boat relative to water. So that will relate to the magnitude of vector B here. But we don't have vector B on our diagram yet. So we'll put that on in just a minute. So let's first of all look at the required direction. That will be vector B that we want to know about. So we know the direction of vector A, that is east. We know the direction of vector C, that is due north. So therefore we need to rearrange this equation for B. And if C is equal to A plus B, that means B is equal to C minus A. And from what we saw previously, we know that is B equals C plus negative A. So there's a number of ways we could do this. But one way we could do it, for instance, is to put negative A out here, let's say. So the same length as A, still magnitude 12, but pointing in the opposite direction. The next question, we're adding C and negative A. So are these vectors head to tail in the current diagram? No, they are not. So we could do this by putting a parallel vector, which again will be negative A up here, on the head of vector C. So that the vector C plus negative A, which we're saying is vector B, is going to be out here. And the required angle theta is going to be there relative to north. So now we have our diagram, useful to draw up the triangle to see what we're looking at. And the triangle we are interested in is this one here. We know C is due north, but we don't know the magnitude of that. 
we know the magnitude of vector A is 12. And now we can put the 16 on the diagram because we're told the woman can row at 16 kilometres per hour. So that is the magnitude of vector B. That is, that is the velocity of the boat relative to water. So that will be 16. And we require this angle here. Now if we know another angle or side in the triangle, that will help. Now because we're looking at north and east originally, and negative A points west, the angle between due north and west is 90 degrees. So that is in fact a right angled triangle, which then makes it straightforward to find theta, using that sine theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, so 12 over 16, or 3 quarters, therefore theta is going to be inverse sine of 3 quarters and theta works out in fact to be 48.59 degrees correct to two decimal places. So therefore that means we now know that the required direction and again we need to make sure we write this correctly. If you're starting from north it's actually going 48.59 degrees west of north. So we could write it in this way, north 48.59 degrees west. And again it helps at this stage to think about whether this logically makes sense. And the person wants to row north and the current is pulling her around to the east. So logically she would have to start a bit to the west of north if the current is then going to pull her around so that the boat is going due north relative to land. So this looks right in terms of what we would expect. Now another question we could ask is what is the velocity of the boat relative to land? And relative to land we saw that the boat was going due north. So that tells us the direction. But velocity relates to both magnitude and direction. So we would also want to know the speed of the boat relative to land. And the speed of the boat would be this length here of this side of the triangle that's pointing due north. So let's just redraw that diagram for a minute. This picture might not be perfectly to scale. So we've got this situation here and we actually now know what theta is but because it's a right angled triangle to find the magnitude of vector c we could just use Pythagoras here which will give us c squared plus 12 squared is the length of the hypotenuse squared, which is 16 squared. Therefore, c squared equals 16 squared, which is 256, minus 12 squared, which is 144, giving c squared equals 112. And hence, that means that c is going to be equal to the square root of 112, and to two decimal places, that works out to be 10.58. So what units is this in, since this represents speed? And originally we saw all speeds were in kilometres per hour. And the velocity is both speed and direction. So since we know the velocity of the boat relative to land was required to be due north, we can now say that the velocity relative to land is in fact 10.58 kilometres per hour due north. And you'll notice here that we've looked at an example of this sort of problem in terms of boats where the current and the velocity of the boat relative to water are both taken into account to work out velocity relative to land. Similar applications could also occur in other areas such as a simplified aviation problem for instance if we wanted to look at the direction of an aeroplane relative to land in relation to the direction in which the person is pointing the plane and the wind resistance in a simplified example where again we assume speed is constant.